thank you. Thank you for staying up to the very last um, session of the day. Um, I assume that, I will just assume that most of you are the biggest SFOM nerds in the whole conference that's staying at the, for a conference like, for a talk like this. So we're gonna, I hope to reward that SFOM nerdery because we're gonna see some fun stuff uh, from this tool. Um, so to introduce myself, um, my name is Salvo Garcia. Um, people call me Puerco. Um, I maintain some of the release tooling in Kubernetes. Um, I am one of the technical leads with Kubernetes release. I also maintain the um, Kubernetes, uh, the Protobon project in the Open Source Security Foundation, uh, which is something that we'll delve into. Uh, and I am also one of the um, collaborators with the SPDX SFOM standard. Uh, so most of my mo most of my daily activities have to deal with SFOMs. Um, if you want to follow or whatever, I'm Puerco almost in every, every, everywhere. Um, so before we start, um, I would like to talk about why Bombshell was created in the, the first place. So we're gonna um, be going into what Bombshell is and what you can use it for, uh, but it's important to understand why it was created in the first place. So anybody who has worked with SBOMs, probably you've seen that there's a lot of variance in SBOM uh, output, in not only the output of the SBOM generators, but also in the documents that tools will expect um, to, when ingesting. Some SBOMs will create like flat lists of dependencies and some can produce like really beautiful structured SBOMs, but then that structure breaks other tools when ingesting them. Um, Sometimes you will have, um, you, you will need to merge SBOMs because tools are very specialized on what they can look at. For example, some tools are more focused on licensing and some tools are more uh, focused on uh, extracting the, the security information from dependencies. And so if you want to have like a great SBOM, sometimes you need to combine the information in all of those. Um, also, uh, there's a need to query the SBOM data. So for example, if you have to enact policy to reject certain dependencies or to make sure that you're not ingesting certain versions, you need to query the SBOM data that's uh, in there. And sometimes you can do that with tools like JQ, for example, but uh, JQ understands J uh, um, JSON, but it doesn't really understand the semantics of the SBOM. Um, and uh, finally, well, the, the last point was about enacting policy from the SBOM data. So uh, before we go in into, into Bombshell and what it does, uh, it's important to understand Protobon. Uh, Protobon is, uh, at its core, is a neutral representation of SBOM data. It is a project uh, currently under development in the Open Source Security Foundation. Um, and it's basically, you can think of Bombshell as a universal, universal I.O. layer for SBOM. So you can read any SBOM, work with a neutral representation of the data, and then you can output the, the, the data to a, any of the SBOM formats. It supports uh, both SPDX and CycloneDX. Um, the project also has a library that supports a graph API uh, so that you can do operations like make, mixing the, the SBOM information, we're gonna take a look at that in a little bit. And we're starting to add more functionality to the project to, do, to handle some of the common SBOM uh, operations. And for example, right now, we just finished the, the storage module that lets you store the SBOM information in a variety of backends. Uh, we have one for ENT, the graph database, like the graph uh, um, interface for, for Go. We're working on storing them in, in uh, buckets and other types of block storage, files, and so on. Um, and bomb, and Protobomb is the core of Bombshell. Um, if you, uh, perhaps you saw this, um, Bombshell was um, developed as part of a, uh, both Bombshell and Protobomb were developed as part of a contract from uh, DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, and CISA. Um, so based on that, um, we developed a uh, protobomb to make, so the idea of that project was to have better collaboration between the SBOM formats. And once it, it, it was finished, uh, the project was donated to the OpenSSF. Um, they 
it was like a big announcement back in April, um, and it was picked up by some of the uh, outlets, uh, technology outlets. Um, so let's go to the, start diving into the technical part. Um, so the first thing to understand about all of this is that SDOMs are graphs. In fact, they're directed graphs. Uh, so if you take, for example, an SPDX SDOM, you will have a bunch of packages and a bunch of files, and then the graph starts by, uh, if you start tra traversing the SBOM at the SBOM root, uh, that SBOM root is linked via relationships to the packages that form a node, and then to the, also to the files that, that are also uh, function as nodes in the, in the graph. And those relationships, which are typed, uh, kind of form the edges of the, of the graph. In Cyclone DX, it's kind of the same, uh, but a little bit different. The way it works is in Cyclone DX, you will have the top of the SBOM, the, the entry point, and most of the time, but not always, you will have a root component uh, that captures some information about the software piece that the SBOM is describing. And from there, you have a tree with other components uh, uh, attached to it. And, uh, and if you think of a tree, that itself is a graph. Uh, and that could be the graph, but uh, Cyclone DX also has a dependency graph section where you can introduce more relationships between the components, making it a more complex graph. Um, and th so both, both standards can be abstracted as, as graphs, and this is what uh, Protobom uh, does. So I'm gonna show you a couple of concepts about uh, uh, Protobom. Uh, the central core of information in Protobom is a node. A node captures the information of a component in Cyclone DX and a package or a file in SPDX. So in Protobom, we have a representation, uh, a data structure that captures everything that the, that the native formats uh, have in their node representation, so in the packages of components. And when you ingest an SBOM into Protobom, it will capture everything losslessly. So that's the guarantee that um, Protobom gives you. Um, once you read it, um, you start adding, and, and, and the parser of Protobom reads the native formats and starts creating nodes for each of the, of the components and packages that it finds, and then uh, starts forming the graph. So that's, those nodes are the core of the, of the Protobom model. And uh, just as in SPDX, the, 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 the edges of the, of the graph are also typed. So we capture the relationship types of SPDX into the Protobon model so that they don't get lost. Then the second one, the, the next concept to understand about Protobon is the node list. So if you think about this, uh, this uh, part of the graph, that could be an SBOM almost, but it'll go, it will also be like a part of the graph, like a subsection. And in Protobon we have this uh, notion called a node list that captures a graph, its relationships, and also the, the starting nodes. So it's intended to be a fragment of an SBOM, and by fragment it can be a part, a part of it, but also the whole graph of an SBOM, uh, and it's intended to be portable so that you can do operations with it. We're gonna see a little bit how that works. Um, so when we capture that uh, graph piece and we encapsulate it in a, in a data structure, that's called a, a node list. Uh, something important to note is that a node list can contain more than one root node. Um, so for example, if you check out the uh, resulting data from reading an SBOM that describes two container images, you're gonna have two entry points in the, in the data. Um, and then finally, there's a document. Um, a document that is what would be the SPDX document or the Cyclone DX document is simply a node list with some metadata attached to it. And that metadata contains the author, the date, uh, the identifier of the document, and so on. Um, so we capture that metadata, the node list, into a con into a encapsulated in a, in a data structure, and that becomes a document. Um, as I mentioned before, Protobum uh, has a full graph API so that you can do operations on the SBOM data. So for when you read SBOMs, you can extract parts of it, you can merge them, uh, all using 
the, the, the functions of the uh, library. The library itself, it's written in Go, um, and there are some folks studying an, an, another um, port in Python as well. So those are the, basis, the, the basics of, of Protobam. Something important to note about Protobam is that Protobam is scoped only to the bill of materials part of the, of the formats. So right now the formats have been growing to, to capture everything from not just uh, component data, but also um, things like AI and VEX and vulnerability information. We, Protobam cares only about the dependency data. You can still reference the other information by treating them as an external document, but uh, this, is, this, this is what the project does. Now, on top of Protobum, so Protobum is designed to be like a IO layer for SBOM, and on top of it, we start seeing that people are building applications. So there's a, uh, if you were at the keynote this morning, um, Marina talked about SBOMIT, that, that one is based on Protobum. Uh, there's another project in the OpenSF called BOMCTL, also built on top of Protobum. And Bombshell was kind of the first application built on top of, of the stack. So here's more or less the way it's structured. At the very bottom, you have the native formats, which are SPDX and Cyclone. And then on top of it, you have Protobum, which is, serves as the IO layer between the application on top and the formats below. And what Bombshell is at its core is simply an ex like the graph API of Protobum exposed in cell the CEL, the Common Expression Language. Um, if you're not familiar with Cell, it's uh, what drives uh, some of the latest uh, Kubernetes policies and also um, things like the uh, queries in, in Compute Engine and uh, other, other projects. And it's used generally for to declare uh, things like policies and so on. Um, so how does Bombshell work in a nutshell? <laughs> so, well, at its core, it's simply an interpreter. So you have the bombshell binary, and you load what we call our cell recipe, and it generally can be just like one line of code that does a transformation to your SBOM. And then you feed it an SBOM, and you get an output. That's the basic operation of it. Of course, the input can be not just one SBOM, it can be more than one SBOM, and those SBOMs, since it's based on protobom, it can be any format that you want. Um, and then the output varies depending on what the cell recipe does. So the output can be a new SBOM, a new document, can be a Boolean, and you can set Bombshell to fail if you want to use it as in a pipe so that things break, uh, such as a test, for example. Uh, the output can be a node, uh, the, just a, like, for example, if you select one node, it will output it, and, or the node list, so you can and when you run it in the terminal, um, right now there's a question of what do we do with a node and node list so that you, it's a useful output. Like we can output like some dump of the information so that you can read it, uh, but we're kind of looking of what to do with it um, a little bit. Uh, that's why a little bit more useful. Um, so here's an example of how those recipes work. Um, so when you run uh, one of the cell recipes, you get an SBOM array with, uh, with an uh, index set, uh, with each of the documents that you pass it as an argument loaded into, into memory. And based on those documents, you can do certain operations based on the, on the Protobom API. So for example, if you run SBOMs, the, select the first SBOM, and then you call the packages method, it will extract all of the packages from, uh, from the first document, uh, leaving out all of the files, for example. And finally, um, you can do transformations to the, so to, the resulting, to the result of packages, like for example, convert it to a document. Um, the evaluation, uh, so it, something important to note is the, the final evaluation of the recipe. So each of those, um, parts before the period will give you a different uh, evaluation. So the first one, if you only say SBOM zero, it'll give you back a document. So the, the recipe will evaluate to the document. Then when you attach packages, that gives you a node list as a result. 
And there are certain operations that you can do with each of those result types. And with, with a node list, you can convert them using the to document function to a document. Uh, so if, you, if I were to write this in, in, a, in a file and execute it using Bombshell and feed it out in SBOM, it will go get loaded as the first SBOM, get all of the packages, and return an SBOM with only those packages. We're going to see an example in a little bit. Um, when you have a document as an output, you obviously can choose any of the formats that Proton supports uh, to, to uh, output to, and write the SBOM in that, in that format. Um, so that's basically the core of it. Um, so I would like to show you uh, a couple of examples of how this works. Um, so for these examples, I'm going to be using BOM, which is the uh, SBOM tool that we wrote for Kubernetes, uh, which lets you generate SBOM, so also visualize them. Uh, and then here's the, the I'm going to be using an SBOM as an example that has this structure here. Um, if you see at the top, uh, y y well, this is because if I show you the code, it's going to be difficult to visualize. So I, I made it like this. So the SOM I'm going to be using describes a container image, and it has a package at the top describing the image, it has a second package describing the first layer. It's a single Im a layer image. And then it has packages for each of the operating system packages inside of the image. And those packages contain, in turn, the files that that package provides. So for example, I'm going to be using a, um, an image for curl. And then the curl package um, will list below it all of, all, all, all of its files. So for example, if I do, uh, if I show you the SBOM using BOM, it's that structure that I was just telling you. So at the top, I have a package describing the image, then the layer, and then that layer has 12 OS packages installed. Uh, so the first one is CA certificates bundle, glibc, uh, the base layout of Wolfie, um, LD Linux, glibc, and so on. And each of those packages in turn contain their own files. So um, the first example that I want to show you is if I do bombshell and then I load the recipe. Uh, for, let me show you the recipe. Um, I'm going to be executing this one. So this is this is what a recipe looks like. I, don't know, I, I think it's big enough, right? So the recipe is a single line of code that does a transformation. So the idea is that you can run Bombshell, like for example in CI, and then have it transform your SBOMs, um, and then to do something useful with them. So this this uh, this example will load the SBOM that I pass it, all of the SBOMs, and then it's going to select the first one. It's going to extract all of the files, and then finally it's going to um, convert that into an SBOM. So if I do uh, bombshell, then pass it the recipe, and then the SBOM, which was that curl one, if I run it. I'm going to get a new SBOM that has only the files. So and to prove that, I'm going to show you. So here it is. So this is the new SBOM, the, new stru the structure of the new SBOM that I just generated. So it's, uh, it's a new SBOM that only contains the 55 files that I added. Something to note here is these warning messages here output by BOM. So as you can see, it added the orphan nodes. And the reason why this is happening, it's because I, since I only extracted the files and remove, uh, remove their parents, which are the packages, those nodes are now floating and they don't have an owner. So what, um, what uh, BOM does is that it takes all of those orphan nodes and adds them as a top level uh, files in them. Which is not what happens if I run if I show you this recipe, this is the one that I use in the example. It's using instead of the files function, this is using the packages function. So what this does is it takes the SBOM and gives me back the packages. But you're going to see what happens with this one. Um, 
So first, let me show you the resulting S bomb so that you can see it. So this is a resulting S bomb. So I have it set up to output SPDX, but um, I, I can show you um, a different output. So this is the S bomb only with the packages. So no files are included in this. So if I pass this through the visualizer, you're going to see it's a much simpler S bomb and it doesn't include the files, but the packages are still there. And since the packages are related, uh, they, they are the, the parents of the, the files that got uh, removed, they keep their structure uh, in the file. So you can do that transformation. So if you can think about, for example, if you want to do, um, uh, for example, think about running a process that checks the integrity of files based on their checksums, you can pass it through the files function, get an S1 of only the files, and run that to check the hashes of files, for example. Or if you want to uh, do something like pass these dependencies through a security scanner, you can get um, um, an S bomb only with the dependencies without the file information and that sort of thing. Um, so in the first example, when I run it, I transform the S bomb uh, on the left to a much simpler version, which only included the files in a, in a flat list. And then on the second example, I removed all of the files and got the, the structure on the right, which is uh, keeping the same structure without the file information. So those are kind of the most basic examples of what you can do. Now, let me walk you through a little bit of a more complex example, which is composing the two SBOMs. So imagine that you have a very cheesy SBOM generator that only can detect that there's a file and gives you a package with um, a package with a binary. Uh, and then some hashes. In fact, I have a, such an SBOM here. Uh, so I generated an, an SBOM with a BOM binary, which is the same tool I'm using now. Um, so if I visualize this one, so it's an SBOM that only has one package describing that binary. That's it. Um, in fact, it's so simple that probably can fit in the hole in, in, one, in one screen. Yeah, so it's just one package. It has the hashes of the file, the license, that's about it. So that SBOM wouldn't get me very far, but then there's, um, if you have seen, GitHub has this feature that can give you um, an SBOM on any commit of your repository. And that one also has its, its particular things. Some things are good, some not that good. Um, but you can improve, um, for example, if I have a binary, that SBOM generator will not pick it up. So if I want to generate an SBOM of my binary with its dependencies, I have to do that crossing of information. So I have here an SBOM I generated with GitHub uh, of the dependencies of, of BOM, of the, the tool I'm using. Uh, so I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Uh, So this is the SBOM, this is the information loaded on the SBOM that Git, GitHub generated for me. So it has 109, 191 uh, relationships, so those are the packages that it found. And so th those are all of the dependencies that it could find in my repository, right? So how do I, let me show you the composition example. Uh, Uh, compose, all right, here it is. So this is a, a, a some something that's a little bit more complex, uh, but it's also super simple to understand. So what it, this recipe does is that it um, loads, uh, takes the first SBOM loaded into memory, then it takes uh, here, uh, takes the, the second SBOM loaded into memory, extracts, uh, the packages of a specific type, because if you if you notice here, uh, the GitHub SBOM generator is picking up uh, the NPM uh, dependencies part of the documentation, and down here, it's also including including the actions uh, annotated as packages. So I don't care about those because they're not really dependencies of my of my binary, right? 
So what the, the recipe here is doing is that from the second S-bomb, it, it's querying to extract only the Perl type of Go, uh, the package URL uh, identified packages, and generating a list of those, and then it's mixing them um, into the uh, node named file bomb on the first S-bomb with a relationship type of depends on. So if I run this, um, So I'm gonna pass the first S bomb, which is the one that only has the binary. binary. And then the second S bomb is gonna be the one from GitHub. Then I run it and I get a new S bomb. Uh, so if you see, so I'm gonna show you just quickly here are the packages. All of the packages are now typed with Golang, right? So I'm gonna pass it through the visualizer so that we can see what we got. Um, okay. So this is the new resulting SBOM. So I have the same component at the top, but only this time it's mixed with the contents of the second SBOM and with all of the filtered, um, with all of the filtered dependencies. So probably here, I mixed up this, the slides, but uh, so the idea is that uh, you can do queries by the package type uh, inside of the SBOM, like we just showed. So for example, uh, in the, the first SBOM, in the curl one, uh, we have the, uh, all of the components have a package type of OCI, and then the operating system dependencies have a package type, uh, um, a Perl type of uh, APK. So you can do queries to filter those and select some and filter others out. So that's it. Um, I wanted to leave some time for questions in case there were any. Um, I also have a couple of other um, examples that I can show you and um, if, you're, if you're interested, uh, but that's basically it. Um, just a, a final note on some pointers here. Uh, the, the first link is a Proton project if you want to join. Um, we're, it's still under development. There's a ton of cool innovation going on in that project. Uh, right now we're working on the storage backends, but we're gonna start expanding to other areas of, of, of SBOM, uh, trying to capture everything that, uh, for example, we're now starting to debate about having a single um, package URL parser so that we can do that kind of filtering on the dependencies so and so on. Um, in the second, um, Oh, I mixed up the, the, the Kubernetes one. Uh, the second one is Bombshell. You can download it. Um, think of it as a more of a technology preview. Uh, but the idea is if people find it useful, uh, perhaps we'll move that project into the Protobon project so that it, um, it can live there. And, and well, the final one was supposed to be the link to, to Bomb so that you can download it and visualize the S-Bombs and so on. Um, so that's it, basically. All right. I don't know if you have any questions or um, or whatever. All of the all of the examples that I showed are in the in the Bombshell repository. In case you want to download them and play with them, and if you have suggestions for improving the APIs, uh, you're always welcome. Um, not. The, not all of the API from Protobum, not all of the graph API from Protobum is exposed yet in cell uh, because it keeps changing. But uh, if you want to, um, if you need some more functions, uh, either at the Go level or at the cell, CL level, we can f certainly add more functions. Um, and yeah, that's it. Anybody, if anybody has any questions, whatever, just uh, let me know. But uh, something that I wanted to show you and I forgot was the example of, uh, for example, if I do this, for example, if I do I, if I do the packages example, I get like a, the SPDX document and the other one was, I forgot to show you this, it's, uh, I can pass the SBOM format here 
and the results of the query are going to be converted to a to a cycle on the ex, uh, document. So there it is. And another one that I wanted to show you was you can do simple queries like, for example, extracting information from a node. So you can have that. So there's a bunch of, of things that can, can be used for that. Uh, and Bombshell can be set up to fail if some of the conditions are, if you get a, uh, if you have like a, uh, the return of your query of your recipes of Boolean, you can exit a non-zero so that your tests fail if you're running it in CI. And yeah, there's a, like a bunch of, of other uh, use cases for it. So just wanted to, to get it in front of you. Oh, that's it, thank you. So the question for the recording was that if you, can you generate an, uh, an S-bomb from a pure binary, right? Yeah. The answer is it depends, it depends on, the, on what you use to build the binary. Uh, Go is very generous and will store the information in the binary itself so you can extract it. Uh, but other things like C, that information gets lost and you never know the dependencies. Exactly, I mean, well, there's a whole question about trusting the SBOM, right? Because anybody could potentially, uh, that's what the SBOM project that I mentioned in, uh, earlier is trying to do, like, can you prove how this SBOM was generated? Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, there are different kinds of SBOMs depending on, you can build them at source, you can build them uh, on deploy, and depending on the ecosystem that you're, program runs in and where you're uh, setting it up, the, it, it can, the SBOM can be different. Uh, so for example, if you have a dependency that's dynamically linked, uh, that binary will use um, certain dependencies on one system, but could be linked to a different ones. So that's, that's why there are different SBOM generation times. Um, for source, um, there's some question about, for example, in, some languages, for, for example, I think in Python, you can specify like a range of like, give me this dependency higher than this version number. And that dependency will only get computed when you, uh, when the interpreter runs it. Uh, so there are some questions on the validity or value that an SMOM with with, without the version can give you, right? So um, I think, I personally think it's, it's better to know Without a, without a version, that not knowing at all, uh, but um, yeah, it can it can change. So the ownership on the producers would also publish that one. Exactly. I mean, it, so if you, the, it depends on what you want to use the SBOM for. If you want to know exactly the 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 the, the version of the dependencies for something like a matching a, against a vulnerability database, then you need to perhaps have a a uh, Nesbon that has the dependencies already resolved to whatever it's gonna be running. Uh, or having a, a, those dependencies locked, uh, or a, a, a language that uh, has a lock file by just built in, doesn't compute the dependencies uh, dynamically. Um, but sometimes if you wanna 
try to, for example, avoid a dependency that you know it has a, like a bad license, right? You don't care about the version. You simply look for it and block it. I forget. Exactly, so the idea, and that's that's why it supports loading more than one SPOM, so the idea is, I mean, th this has to be tested in, in real life to see how the memory behaves and all of that, but uh, in theory, you can load any number of SBOMs, and then you can do those queries on all of them, and then try to match, for example, does the name of this dependency match log4j, and the, the, the version matches this, and then can give you uh, like a Boolean, for example and then you can use that to drive policy. So the idea is that, um, so the, 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 the idea of Bombshell at its core is kind of have these super simple files and even specify them on the command line uh, just to do like some b processing, like quick processing of an SBOM. Like, oh, I, need, I have an SBOM that I know that it's gonna be generated all through my CI at the same time, I know the, the structure it's gonna have, but I need to change a little bit the, the output or its structure or extract the value just to feed it to something else. And you just stick bombshell in the middle, do that transformation, get the data, and move on. All right, any, any others? Okay, cool. Thank you and uh, we made it to the end. <laughs>